Kiora from a uh, snowy day here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I'm Lauren Sawson, uh, Dean of Osgoode Hall Law School. It's my pleasure to join the Government uh, Law Year in Review uh, proceedings at the New Zealand Centre for Public Law and my thanks to uh, Dean and Claudia for facilitating my uh, involvement. They asked me to speak about a, a notable development uh, from Canada in 2017 and I want to share reflections on the Tanaha First Nation judgment of our Supreme Court of Canada issued in uh, November. This was the very first decision to grapple with the scope and dynamics of uh, a right to Indigenous spiritual practice, both in the context of the Canadian Charter of Rights, Freedom of Religion, uh, and the Canadian Constitution's Section 35 rights uh, protecting existing Indigenous uh, and Aboriginal rights of many kinds, whether uh, title, self-government, hunting, fishing, and in this case for the first time uh, exploring uh, that Section 35 set of rights over uh, again spiritual practices. So uh, the Tanaha First Nation had uh, brought this challenge seeking to roll back an approval given by the British Columbia provincial government to a ski resort in the Jumbo Valley in the southeastern uh, part of the province uh, known as uh, Katmuk to the Tanaha uh, and a place with not only a sizable grizzly bear population but uh, home to the grizzly bear spirit which plays a central role in the cosmology and spiritual communal life of the Tanaha First Nation. So uh, over a two decade uh, saga involving lots of negotiation, attempts uh, to find common ground Ultimately, the Tanaha First Nation had taken the view that the ski resort simply couldn't be built on this sacred territory. British Columbia government uh, was willing to compromise, but not willing to uh, forego approval of the ski resort in some form. So that reaches the Supreme Court. Uh, the majority of the Supreme Court of Canada take the view that uh, freedom of religion does not extend to objects of belief like a sacred territory, uh, in this case uh, uh, the Katmuk um, Valley. Uh, and uh, instead the majority um, elaborates a, a view that says having a belief is protected under the Charter, manifesting that belief is protected, and earlier cases have uh, dealt with uh, the rights of a Sikh uh, boy to carry a kirpin to school, a ceremonial dagger. Uh, a Jewish family erecting a, a sukkah to observe uh, Sukkot, those are protected. But the integral way in which places and spaces uh, are engaged in indigenous uh, spiritual life, again across a diverse set of communities, whether lakes, trees, mountains, rocks, uh, all of uh, those objects of uh, belief as they're referred to by the court are not covered. Uh, by this uh, freedom of religion under the Charter. Uh, so that has a significant implication for a range of these Indigenous communities throughout the country uh, whose spiritual life would appear to lie outside the ambit of protection of the Charter, uh, which again uh, put the focus on Section 35 of the Constitution, which is intended to protect existing Indigenous uh, rights. And here too the court found while those rights arise, uh, any uh, unresolved claim over territory gives rise to this uh, uh, fiduciary style obligation to consult and accommodate on the part of the Crown. It was discharged in this case, in the eyes of the court, over these many years of negotiation and attempted compromise, notwithstanding the Tanaka's view that they couldn't accommodate uh, a sacred space and still allow a ski resort. So uh, it was a an unsatisfying decision, of course, for the Tanaha, for many uh, Indigenous rights activists, uh, but also seemed to stand in stark contrast to uh, to New Zealand and the Hanganui uh, recognition of a, a river as a legal entity uh, with not only uh, rights in a legal scheme, but also uh, recognized as an ancestor, as connected to uh, a community uh, over whom there are guardianship and responsibilities and roles uh, in a way very much that the Tanaha wanted to sear their relationship uh, to uh, this territory. Uh, so unfinished business in Canada, again an apparent contrast in developments in New Zealand that many critics of the Supreme Court of Canada have raised here. 
uh, and important developments uh, to come on the journey to reconciliation, particularly as Canada uh, has legislation that will recognize UNDRIP, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, as a framework and its concern for free prior and informed consent over the use of Indigenous uh, territory by the uh, government. Uh, lots of um, uh, work left to be done to, uh, to reach uh, a common ground on how we're going to move forward. Look forward to following developments uh, in uh, New Zealand and of course uh, to uh, sharing the conversation on how uh, public law and uh, the role of government law can uh, evolve to uh, adapt and grapple with these uh, important developments on both sides of the world. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to participate and I wish you the very best uh, for the day. Look forward to our paths crossing uh, in the very near future. Thanks.